Today, I'm going to make a Midwestern dessert that I forgot existed. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I am super excited about what I am about to do here in the Panda Research Institute kitchen because this is a little something from my childhood that I forgot and only recently came up in a video or something that I was watching. And I actually learned the name to this dessert, which I actually didn't know growing up as a kid. So first of all, a little backstory here is when I grew up, I grew up in the church, and so there were a lot of potlucks in the basement. In fact, I even remember my grandmother making something like this once when we were visiting, I think maybe over Thanksgiving. And if you're from the Midwest, you have probably heard of this, but I didn't even actually know the name of this dessert at the time, and it's called Ambrosia. Now, whenever I hear that, I think of flowers or something, but apparently it was the name of a dessert. Pretty ambitious name, I think, for what this actually is. So I actually want to make this, and I actually want to make this in the easiest way possible. I found online some recipes to make this, and they seem pretty elaborate. And I'm kind of guessing that my grandmother did not go the elaborate route when she made this. Some people were saying that the uh, creaminess of it comes from some Greek yogurt and some sour cream and then powdered sugar, and then you whip it together and do some other things, and lo and behold, you get this creaminess. I also found some recipes that said just use Cool Whip, and so that's what we're going to do. Now, you can also use fresh fruit with this, but I don't think my grandma did. I'm kind of guessing she used stuff in a can. Now, there are two main fruits that you were supposed to have in this. These mandarin orange slices, as well as pineapple chunks. They actually sell cans of pineapple chunks. However, some people have noted that sometimes they see other pieces of fruit in there. Some diced apple pieces, sometimes cherries, sometimes grapes. And so some people say, hey, you can use these pure fruits or you can use fruit cocktail. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use everything because I definitely remember these as being the main constituents of the dessert. But I also remember sometimes a little sweet treat, a random cherry or something. So I got some of this, too. Now, I'm going to make a healthy dose of this because I definitely subscribe to the school of thought that some is good, more is better. So we're going to make as much with this as humanly possible now. I have a bowl that we are going to make this in. This is actually very similar to the bowls that it was served in, as far as I can remember. I remember people coming with a bowl of this and just saran wrap over the top, and I could see inside, and it was delicious. And we are going to need the Cool Whip. We are also going to need a strainer because these have a lot of juice in them. So I have another bowl to catch the juice as we go ahead and strain it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start opening up some of these cans and draining out the juice and then putting the fruit in the bowl. Mandarin oranges in the strainer. Be a little more careful. Splashy, splashy. Mm. Got a little mandarin on my thumb there. Mm. Very delicious. Got some pineapple chunks. Pineapple goes in here too. And then lastly, we are going to put in some fruit cocktail. Time for cocktails. And the fruit cocktail with those cherries peeking out of there. That goes in there. Ooh, all those juice-soaked grapes are in there too. I'm looking forward to that. All right, now I'm going to take my Cool Whip here. Can't look at that. I'm just going to use the whole thing. Why not? Like I said, some is good, more is better. Gonna need a utensil for this. So I'm just gonna put this in the bottom here. And now I am just going to go ahead and dump all of the fruit on top and start mixing it together. Honestly, that's kind of the lion's share of the making in this. All right, so Cool Whip, fresh fruit. Fruit goes into the Cool Whip, just like that. Now that I have everything in here, I'm just going to mix it up because basically what we want to do is we get everything coated with that Cool Whip. And then this thing is going to go apparently in the fridge for 30 minutes to kind of chill everything down, I guess. So, I mean, it seems like it is ready to eat right now. But patience, patience, you know, that's what makes us successful here at the Panda Research Institute. That deferring that pleasure, that's really a key to life. And I might just eat it now because it looks good. But the other thing that I will say is that my grandmother had a tendency to take these cool containers, clean them out, and then use them to store leftovers. So I might have to do that too. And then the last thing that goes in here, I almost forgot, are marshmallows. Now, some people said use mini marshmallows. I'm not going to use the big inch size marshmallows, but I just remember them being regular marshmallows. I don't remember us being all that fancy and having all these different sizes. So just going to go ahead and dump in a healthy dose of marshmallows. I don't know that this whole bag is going to go in there, but I said, some is good, finish the sentence. 
All right, now that I got this all stirred up and mixed together and the fruit is all coated, the marshmallows are all coated, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for 30 minutes and then we wait. All right, I waited as long as I could. I couldn't wait the full 30 minutes because it smells and looks so delicious and it's taking me back to my childhood. One thing I want to say here is that, first of all, I don't have any glass bowls. I wanted something to be able to show it to you, so I'm just going to use a tumbler like this to show you what we've got. The other thing you might be saying, if you're from the Midwest, you may have a good call out right now and you say, Pete, you didn't put any shredded coconut on there. And you would be right because I hate coconut. I tell you what, if I were on a deserted island and there was nothing but coconut and plenty of coconut, I would starve to death. I would also probably act out movies. All right, so what I have here is a tumbler full of this ambrosia. So you can see all the fruit there, but it's kind of covered with Cool Whip. So you can't really see it. Marshmallows on top. I'm telling you what, if you remember this, put it in the comments because I think a lot of people will have never heard of this or you will know it, but you may not have seen it recently. So definitely check it out. All right, let's give it a try. So a little point of a little mandarin and marshmallows up there. Oh yeah, it's fruit. It's healthy. I'll tell you what. This is about the easiest dessert you can make. It kind of reminds me of a great little summer dessert. It's actually not that heavy, even though we've used a whole tin of Cool Whip here, lots of marshmallows, but really the base of it is fruit. And it's just got a nice, mm, clean, airy, fruity flavor to it. And man, it takes me back. I tell you what, I have not had this for at least 30 years. Of course, something like this is a little lowbrow. It's a little neighborhood potlucky, but man, it definitely takes me back those Thanksgiving and Christmas weekends where six households were piled into one 1,300 square foot home, sleeping on the basement floor with the other kids and looking forward to this after the big meal. So if you want to make ambrosia, it takes about five minutes to make, 30 minutes to wait, mm, and you can't stretch out the eating of it long enough. A little bit of Midwest heaven right here. If you want to buy the stuff that you need to make this, I'll put links to them in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.